We're going to spend the next few minutes talking about migrants who are caught up at the border between Poland and Belarus. The EU is accusing Belarus of trying to destabilize the region by pushing thousands of people over the border, while Poland is being accused of pushing them back to Belarus, thus breaking international law. So let's take a look at what is happening. We're going to start with the EU's Home Affairs Commissioner. What we see now in Belarus is Lukashenko is a desperate he is really hurt by the economic sanctions and the sanctions that Europeans have put on him. He is really desperate and he's trying to destabilize the European Union by bringing in migrants and facilitating them and pushing them into the European Union. So the problem lies at this border between Poland, which is in the EU, and Belarus, which isn't. There's been a huge spike in the number of migrants trying to cross over. Many have come from Afghanistan. We know five people have died in freezing conditions there. 9,000 attempts have been made to cross into Poland since August. Now just compare that to 122 people who were detained after crossing the border illegally in the whole of last year. Now Belarus is accused of flying in migrants and pushing them over the border in retaliation against sanctions for its brutal political crackdown. But President Lukashenko puts the blame on Poland. It is wrong that people are suffering. Yes, we dressed them, we brought them some firewood and some shawls, but they would freeze in winter. These are people who walked thousands of kilometers from the south. To put it short, it's a humanitarian catastrophe on the border. Our neighbor has introduced an emergency and doesn't let anyone in, so that no one knows that people are dying. Now, Poland is accused of being heavy-handed in its response. It's introduced a state of emergency which keeps journalists and NGOs away from the area. And a message on the Interior Ministry's website says that any attempt at illegal crossing may result in criminal sanctions. Worsening weather conditions may be dangerous to life and health. Any attempt at hiding and sleeping rough outside in the open may end tragically. Well, my colleague, our Europe correspondent Nick Beek, recently travelled to the area and he sent us this report. We meet men who fear they will be the next to die here, overwhelmed by the cold. They'd flown to Belarus from far and wide, each with the promise they could then reach an EU country. But they're stranded. If the Belarusian could send me back to my country, fine. Yeah, I'll be OK. I'd better I die in my country. 21-year-old Magellan from Cameroon tells us how Belarusian troops took them to the Polish border. They monitor the Polish police across the border. They tell us this way, there's no Polish police. So they will tell us, we must cross those wires. We can see a lot of people here are not in a, a good state. Apparently a doctor's on the way but also the, the border force are on the way, so it's not clear what's going to happen to these men. They were playing us like a football. The Belarus will beat us, push us to Poland. The Poland will catch us, beat us, push us back to Belarus. We put this to the local commander, who's just arrived. And so have your border force been pushing migrants back into Belarus? He won't answer that one. So that was the situation at the end of last week. A little earlier today, Nick actually tweeted that Poland is saying that a record 473 people tried to enter from Belarus yesterday. Nick added that the Polish government is planning to send text messages urging migrants to go back to Minsk. The trouble is, he adds, that most of those people he met last week, well, they said that Belarusians had stolen their phones. So a lot to discuss. In a moment, we'll be speaking to Poland's Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Marcin Przedaj. But first, we're going to talk to Kalina Czwarnog, who's from the NGO Fundacja Ocalenia, which basically translates Salvation Foundation. Now, Kalina, you and your team have been visiting the border area over the past few months since the number of migrants trying to cross has increased so much. Just explain to us what you have been seeing, what the migrants have been telling you um, at uh, about uh, half of August uh, we found a group 
of 32 people from Afghanistan who were stuck on the border between the border guards of Belarus and the border guards of uh, Poland. And now they are still there. Uh, it's been 50 days. They were saying that uh, the Belarusians are not letting them out. They are not letting them uh, go back to Belarus or further. And also the Polish uh, forces are not letting them in even when they ask for asylum, even if they ask for international protection from Poland. Uh, and that's actually um, a violation of international law of Geneva Convention. According to the law, uh, the Polish border guard should, um, uh, should arrest the person who crossed the border illegally. And then in detention center, this person should be granted an option for applying for asylum. Now, since the state of emergency was pronounced by the Polish government, it means that NGO groups like yourself, journalists, they can't get to the area to verify this for themselves. How are you dealing with trying to get help to the migrants with, with this situation there now on the border? We are being contacted by family, relatives and friends of people who are crossing the border at the moment, and also by uh, those people who uh, have their phones still, um, if they will send us a pin uh, that shows that they are not in the zone, that they crossed this area of uh, emergency state, uh, we are able to reach them, to find them and to help them with food, uh, some uh, medical aid, um, give them some warm clothes. Um, so that's really a humanitarian aid. Um, unfortunately, most of the groups are still in the zone, which makes it impossible for us to reach them. So do you know what's happening with them? You're, are you saying that they're being pushed back by uh, Polish border patrols? Yes, and actually I wanted to add to what you said before, uh, because we know that uh, the Polish border guards is showing the numbers of attempts of crossing the border. These are not the same as humans. I mean, one person may attempt few times to cross the border. So uh, it's not necessary 10,000 people who tried to cross Polish-Belarusian border. It may be three times less because we know from people we meet that they have tried to cross five times, um, even more. Uh, so what they say is that uh, indeed the Polish border guards are pushing them out um, to the wires of uh, Polish Belarusian fence on the border. Um, and they are using dogs. Uh, we heard the stories about um, using the back of the guns and uh, hitting people with the back of the guns. So, um, and of course, uh, we heard about first deaths uh, on the Polish and on the Belarusian side. Okay, Kalina Czwarnog from Fundacja Ocalenia, thank you so much for the time being. A lot to discuss. We're going to put some of that to Poland's Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Marcin Przydacz, who joins us from Krakow. Now, given the state of emergency declared by the Polish government along the border, it's very difficult for journalists to get anywhere near that area. We're struggling to verify uh, firsthand some of the accounts that Kalina was describing. So can we start with you confirming just how many migrants have died along the Polish-Belarus border? Well, thank you for having me. I think that we should uh, start um, firstly for the numbers uh, attempts. Uh, so there, there were thousands of attempts of um, crossing the, the illegally crossing the borders, and we do have uh, proofs that there are uh, even more than 10,000 people um, uh, which were brought by Mr. Lukashenko to Belarus in order to somehow send them to the European um, Union illegally through. Uh, our uh, borders. Some of them, um, those who already crossed the border, uh, were accommodated by the Polish state and they gave us the testimonies that they were given with uh, some kind of pills 
um, in order to warm up, as the Belarusian guards told them. Uh, unfortunately, uh, five out of um, those people died most probably because of those pills and because of those uh, um, is a kind of um, uh, drug. So it is very um, uh, delicate issue. Those people who already crossed the border um, and, and especially women and kids, uh, um, if they are in a bad condition, they are sent to the um, Polish um, hospitals. But we cannot accept uh, this uh, that kind of activity which is proposed by Mr. Lukashenko, that the people are being invited um, by the state of Belarus sent to the to the border to cross illegally um, uh, the European Union border. Those who uh, want to get the asylum or international protection, they can get it in the embassy of Poland or any other embassy in or any other state. If they get it, then they can um, uh, get to, to Poland or any other state. Of course, those um, people, uh, they don't, don't do that. They just want to cross illegally the, the border. And this is the breaking the break of the law. But can they get to embassies, as you say? Because what we're hearing is, is that Polish border patrols are pushing migrants back. Now, that is breaking international law. Can you respond to that? Well, those people who are already at the territory of course, they can, they can go to the any to any embassy in Minsk or to the consulate uh, in Grodno uh, to apply for the international protection or the asylum. Um, and if um, and if they have all documents, then of course they can um, get this uh, um, uh, um, international protection. If not, of course, we'll also can take care of them, but through the uh, through the embassy. With regard to the uh, pushback, I do not have any information that that kind of. Uh, um, the procedure has been done by the Polish um, safeguard. What they do is to protect uh, uh, the border. And the group where which we've, you've been talking about um, uh, with, uh, with my Polish colleague uh, is still um, at the, on the territory of Belarus. They are still um, there. So there is no legal possibility for them to apply for asyl asylum because they are not, no, no, they are not in Poland. The state of emergency there means that journalists can't get there, NGOs uh, cannot get there. Is this state of emergency will potentially be extended by another 60 days. Is it necessary to stop journalists from getting there to see what is happening? There's also a group of doctors who have been told that their services are not needed. Why are people being prevented to see what is, from witnessing firsthand, what is happening along this border? You know, the state of emergency was introduced uh, during the Zapad exercises. There were uh, thousands of thousands of Russian and Belarusian troops uh, exercising next to our borders, and there were possible uh, provocations at the border. The migration um, crisis uh, is a kind of artificial crisis. Uh, uh, that was the decision of Mr. Lukashenko. Once we imposed uh, the European Union sanctions on him, on, the, on that very day, he said that he will, uh, there will be the answer, and the answer is the artificial migration crisis. So we were afraid of the possible uh, provocation. There was some shooting into the air. So that was the reason why we introduced the um, state of emergency on a very narrow piece of land, only one up to three kilometers from the border um, in Poland. So uh, the, it, it was not the, uh, the reason was not to stop the, uh, the journalists, rather to protect them civilian who is not very needed um, down there next to the uh, Bola Russian um, border. On the other side, we do not have um, the friendly um, 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 the soldiers that are quite aggressive, as I said, shooting and provoking our uh, safeguard and, um, and the policemen. That's why for the, for the, for the, for the, um, the protection of those people, they are not allowed to, to, to cross this, um, uh, this area. Okay, Marcin Przedacz, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs for Poland, thank you so much for joining us here on Outside Source. Thank you.